Docu- um, sorry, automation. These are very big words that very often becomes very heavy. And, and, when I, and when I talk about automation to my wife, you can see her eyes gl- glaze over immediately. You know, you don't have to start going on. So how do we simplify automation? For example, uh, a good question to ask maybe is, what are the typical uh, automation costs, uh, companies should be looking at? Sure, sure. Um, before I, I talk about automation, maybe allow me to uh, give everyone a bit of uh, insight about exactly what OutSystems is, right? So OutSystems is uh, what we call as a low-code uh, application development tool, right? So a lot of you out here, you know, you may be looking to develop um, applications to automate, right? As, as what uh, Adrian mentioned, to actually look at some processes that are very manual. Perhaps you want to deliver a better experience to your customers, but you always feel that it's falling short because maybe you don't have enough manpower, you know, especially right now in the economic status. We are scaling back on, you know, how fast we're going to hire, but at the same time, we still have to digitize, right? We still have to change. We still have to become relevant to our customers, to our employees. So our systems provide a technology, a platform that actually helps you to build applications much faster. Now, coming to your question, Adrian, you asked about um, you know, what, what kind of automation should we be looking at? I think a lot of times, you know, even just now we talk about hybrid workspaces, right? A lot of times we say that um, we want to have a hybrid environment, but we are always forced to go back to the company because, uh, oh, we need to sign off a paper approval, right? Uh, because no choice, right? We, we have to do that, right? So the pro- process inefficiencies it always presents itself as uh, a means for us to not be able to react as an organization, react as a, as a business uh, as we look forward into digitizing. Um, of course, a lot of repetitive tasks, right? Uh, you know, why do we need someone to be looking through Excel and lines and all that? So maybe we can make that resource much more effective in doing something else, right? I think a lot of us seated here, we always feel that there is always a better way of doing things, right? But to do that, usually we look at it upon as a digital means, right? Maybe instead of doing uh, writing and calculation, it should be an auto-calculator because it's um, given, right? So, so this is the way that we are also you know, moving into uh, the whole concept of hybrid intelligent automation. You know, as, as big as the word sounds, it's really very simple. Make your life a little easier, right? Make your life more relevant today to your, to your business, help you to be more efficient, right? So, so in short, that's the two points I want to bring. All right. Uh, so I've seen companies that um, looked into claims, for example, as the first step they go to do automation or, or things that need paperwork, uh, like you have people running around, your technicians are running around, you, 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 you automate something on the iPad so they don't have to mm-hmm. carry papers around. Um, how would a company address the fears of the back-end office? Because when you take away these paperwork and red tape, some staff might feel that that's my job you're taking away. Yeah, well, that, that's, a, that's a very relevant question. I'll put things into a bit of perspective, right? So today, I think all of you, as you come for this event, uh, you actually download uh, or application that you go and assess to see the agenda and all that, right? So this is actually something that uh, Rico um, um, took a deliberate effort to build, right? Uh, instead of having, uh, you know, the marketing team to be issuing flyers to all of you, you know, where you perhaps will lose it. Everything is on the application itself. Now, the question is, does it mean that I am, I'm not needing my resource to, to be doing that? Actually, you don't need because the resource can be put forth into a better outcome, you know, perhaps looking at the event of management, perhaps looking at the oversight of things. It's the same thing, right? Which is, you know, do you actually need five people screening through Excel sheets, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what is an error in a formula? Where else you could actually be automating it and putting forth that resource into something that is much more, you know, effective for you, right? So it's, it's not about, you know, trying to replace the talents. I think right now, all of us are embracing the mindset, which is we want to keep talents, right? We want to keep our resources. We are not trying to fire. Uh, maybe we are not hiring fast enough, but it's about trying to see how we can become more productive. That's the key idea, right? So um, never was automation intended to replace, but it's actually meant to augment, right? Uh, the need for people to be more relevant, right? So that's kind of uh, putting things into perspective, like, right? If we look into today's uh, uh, event and of course putting it back into our own organizations, that could be the best way of looking forward at it. Okay. So um, when we talk about our systems, we know our systems is a tool. And very often yep. we have customers that ask us, so what can OutSystems do, right? And the problem with, with OutSystems or, or low-code or even development in, in, in general is that it can do everything and it can do nothing. So how would you go about um, explaining where the future would be? Where is its place in the future workplace? Sure. I think 
right now, whenever we look at buying technologies, we always see that, okay, I have a problem here, then I buy something for this, right? Then I have something there, okay, maybe we will look at something else to, to resolve the problem. But what, what becomes of this in the future, right? I realize that I need 10 different people to manage 10 different products, right? Because everyone is a subject matter expert in something. Right? And that becomes a problem, an overload for me from a resource perspective, right? Then we, which is, it comes a point in time that I realize no one can cross-share, right? There's, there's tools that cannot be shareable and it's a, a, some, in fact, there's a lot of duplicates in the, in the system today, right? So the, the key idea, you know, our systems, we, like what Adrian said, right? We can do anything, we can do everything, but we also can do nothing, like, because if you don't know what to do, you know, you, you can't do anything with it. But at the end of it, whenever we look at organizations, we have ways of improving of where we are today, as is and needs to be, right? When we look at these gaps, Right, then we ask ourselves, is this something that we can you know, automate, we can actually modernize to do better? Right? Simple things, right? as I work with a lot of organizations today, um, the, the very simple thing that they say is that I have a lot of workflows in my company, you know, um, especially in the manufacturing. Right? A lot of times we talk about you know, wanting to do preventive maintenance of a machine. You know? I can't wait until the machine is faulty, then I trigger someone, right? or I, I get through paper process just to get... Uh, 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 someone to come down. Now imagine you actually have an iPad, right, that you can actually track, right, and say that, okay, maybe it's about time that we have to do something, let's trigger, automatically it actually gives you a workflow to govern. Right? That's right. an example. So, so, brings me to a question like that. Yep. Why build? Why not just buy out of the box? I mean, there are plenty of solutions out there. Sure. Uh, I granted, that I might need 10 people to, to handle 10 problems, but if I only have one problem, why build? Why not just buy out of the box? No, that's a very good question, actually. Um, not everything should be built. I'll be very open with you, right? Um, and times, whenever you buy a technology, and maybe this technology will become relevant for you for the next 10 years, then there's no point in trying to build, right? But then the question you ask yourself is, well, then why, why do I need to build then, right? Because a lot of times, you have very customized processes in your company that maybe, you know, while this technology serves for you today, but maybe tomorrow, you know, you want to build it cannot be done, right? I think um, seated in this in this uh, uh, hall, you know, uh, many of you may have felt that you know I bought I bought a solution today. It right? sounds like it works, uh. but when I actually go to the vendor and I say, hey, can you build some? Can you help me to customize this? They say, oh, cannot, cannot. You want to build? You have to pay me, you know, half of the same amount that you paid for me. They like, why? Why do that? It's just a small functionality I need, right? Many of you perhaps have been through this process, right? Which is it may just hit eighty percent of your functionality, but the twenty percent becomes overly exhaustive for you. Right, so that becomes a reason for you to say, if I can customize from the beginning, it means that I can customize everything, right? And if my business pivots, right, example in COVID, if something has to change, I can just change and I tweak the logic a little bit to make sure that it caters for my, my current reality of what is happening, right? So that's, that's the key concept. However, like I said, right, what do you build and what do you, what do you buy, right? It's something that, you know, you will need to understand as a business, right? You need to perhaps work with the, the subject matter experts to understand more. All right, last question, Lennon. Um, what apps are out there in the market that we already see but we do not know it's our system? Sure. Is, it, is it convenient to, to, no, no, to no, share? No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think for one, right, example, this event app that you are using today, but actually day-to-day -day applications that you use um, um, is actually built using our system. I'll give you a very good example. So um, just, just a raise of hands. Uh, how many people of you here happen to use Starhub? Just, just, just to get a sensing. No one. Uh. Oh, yeah, I see a few hands. Uh. All, all very shy. Uh, Starhub. Okay, so you all know that Starhub, just like the rest of the other telcos, have a no SIM card plan, right? No SIM plan, right? So you don't have to be contracted. You can fine tune. I want to use Instagram a little bit more, so I, I cater for that. Now, Starhub actually built uh, a B2C application called Giga. So if you happen to see this brand out there, Giga is actually built using our systems, right? And, and the, the key idea is that, you know, why they use our systems was because they needed to develop it very quickly, right? I imagine uh, if I'm a, I'm a revenue generating business, I can't wait for one year to build an application just to realize that it's not going to be relevant, right? So, so they were able to build it much shorter, right? An example. In fact, a lot of government websites that you go today, if you go and apply a skills future course, you know, perhaps you are applying for a, a, a work permit and everything else, the government systems itself uh, is using our systems. So thus, what it means is that um, whenever you look at low-code solutions, it important is security. Like, is it secure for me? Can I make sure that you know, um, if I use this, I can you know, be assured to know that the first level of security is being taken care of and governance of things. Right? So um, that's kind of what, what it is.
Great, that was the last question from me. I can oh, see Willy you. stretching, ready for food, ready to rush there. <laughs> so I'm the one uh, that holds you between We're going to open up the, 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 the floor, uh, the questions. Uh, please scan your scan the QR code like before and ask your questions to Leonard. I said that was the last question from me, so help me out here. <laughs> okay, maybe it gets awkward. Is it expensive to hire talent to run this? Do you need do you need special talent to run our system? Actually, not not really. You know, um, um, we we work with a lot of universities today that actually teach our systems, right? So so whenever we look at trying to hire fresh talents, the thing that we ask ourselves is, you know, uh, is it relevant? Right. So it's first of all is that you can always hire talents on the ground. Second of all, it's, it's actually very easy to learn. It takes you about two weeks or so, right, to, to actually learn the technology. So it's not as though you're gonna learn a fresh new skill set that you need ten years of technical skills. It's actually relatively easy um, um, to do that. Okay. Okay, second question. How many customers in Singapore are using our systems? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So actually in Singapore alone we have about over 85 customers. Um, it's not just in, um, so I'm giving you the example of enterprises, for example, government, you know, you talk about telco and so on and so forth. Actually, we also work with a lot of non-profit and SMBs, right? And, and the fact of the matter is today, uh, I think I was just joking with uh, um, 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 one of the, the vendors, you know, in the booth and I was just saying that, you know, um, for those uh, people that, you know, have plants in Tuas, right? You, you go and throw a $5,000 per month pay, people also don't want to go to Tuas, right? Because they say, oh, you know, you pay me that money, you ask me to go to Tuas, right? So that is a fact that, you know, our systems is also very relevant to you know, our local businesses. And the way that we drive our systems today is we always do localized pricing, right? So that it's always fair because we believe that low code should be something that everyone can benefit, right? It should not just be a enterprise tool that only enterprises can use, right? So even like nonprofits, you know, we have like Red Cross, you know, we have uh, churches that even use us as well because all of them have the same need. They need to change the way that they're operating their business just to, just to stay relevant. Okay, third question. How would a global recession in 2023, wow, who's the guru here, wow. <laughs> the genie, uh, affect the way we retain talent? So, so the, the, the person who posed this question expects a recession in 2023. I got to sell my stock quickly. Uh, and how do we retain the talent then? I think, first of all, um, as we look at all the news of all the tech hires and tech fires, you know, um, um, the, the fact of the matter is uh, there is an excess of perhaps um, maybe it's because of the whole idea of uh, tech was being very overstated, overinflated, or even in your own organizations that you, you may be you know, hiring too much you know, because of the demand that suddenly came in. Right? And right now, as we are scaling, we're also trying to see how we can manage uh, our resources as well. I think, first of all, um, um, in most organizations that I speak to, right, the key idea is we, we don't want to fire if we don't need to. Right? We try to retain. Right? But then the question is, if I am retaining as it is, how can I make sure that you know, I can still deliver my KPIs, my outcomes? Then the next thing is that you look at technology. And it's not specific to low code, huh? I'll just be very open. It can be any kind of technologies that you try to do. Right? So um, for one, I, I can't be the one that dictate whether how you're going to retain and is the recession going to help you to, to, to retain or are you going to help you to hire? But the least I can tell you is that most organizations today, regardless of a recession or not, um, have talent in the in the in the mind of their of their of their of the back of their minds, right? Because if anything goes, people are the blood the bloodline of your company, right? So they run the business, they help you to maintain. So um, um, as much as we can, you know, we try to keep them and ensuring that we keep them also engaged. Huh? All right, I'm I'm gonna skip the next question because I can answer it for Leonard. Sure. Is our systems easy to integrate with the company's existing systems? The answer is yes, because we do it here. Uh, to know more, you should go ask him. Uh, if you're a technical subject, we should go there and talk technical with his technical team. Because while Leonard speaks very well, I know for sure he's not that deep a technical yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Un unfortunately, right? But uh, you, you can test me if you need to. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, definitely, definitely uh, but easy. But there's, there's the next question that's just for you. Sure. What does a successful customer look like at our systems? Like me. Uh. <laughs> no, no, uh, how does a successful organization look like? I think, first of all, um, if you can think about it, um, today in your organizations, you, you don't just survive using one application alone, right? You have many kind of processes that you're trying to fix, right? Uh, a successful customer of our systems is one that actually really takes the technology as a way of life, right? Uh, as, a, as, a, as a tool that they can really depend on 
to make changes uh, in the organization. That, that's the first thing, right? And second of all is um, the fact that the technology keeps itself relevant, right? So usually whenever we talk about, if, if you think about what we are trying to do here is we are trying to change the way people are building applications, right? Uh, building apps today, the traditional way is you're writing lines and lines of codes, which is like writing an English composition, right? It's how good I am in my command of English is how good a code I will write, right? But the truth is how many coders out there are good composition writers, right? Some of them are okay, some of them are average, some of them is below average, but it's very hard to determine determine the skill set, right? And you can't tell it through a CV, right? So our systems first provides that governance, right? So which then the question people ask is, is it easy really to hire a talent like that? And most successful customers, first of all, they build many applications with us, but second of all is they always have the ability to attract new talents into their company because talents also look at, you know, what's new in your organization that you offer beyond your products and your services. It's also your technology, the culture that you're setting, right? So that's exactly what we see a successful out systems uh, customer would potentially look like. Okay, we have time for one last question. Sure. Uh, how does out systems customize a system for the customer from scratch, for within a short period of time? Mm -hmm. Usually, it takes a longer time to build from scratch. No, that, that's a that's a great question. So, uh, a very relevant question. So, first of all, it, it looks at exactly what the technology looks like, right? So everything is done via a drag and drop mechanism, right? So, um, you know, today if you happen to have a uh, uh, Shopify or, uh, or Wix.com, right? They always say you can build an e-commerce website using templates, drag and drop, right? That concept, you all can relate. Uh. Now, take that concept into our systems. We are exactly the similar concept, right? So everything is done via a visual way. You drag and drop, but the difference is you don't just have templates. You can fully customize the look and feel, the workflows, the, the data of what you're trying to pick, right? And then you can always still code if you need to. Right, so it doesn't confine you to just building an e-commerce website. You can actually build web applications, mobile applications, whatever that you feel is very much needed um, to drive your business today. Right, so that is exactly the way that you, you do. Right, so you don't look at codes, you look at visual elements. Right? Today, if every of you look at a logic, if something is correct, then it goes somewhere else. Right? You can definitely relate to that and you say, okay, that looks correct. Rather than I give you a, a, a query, a statement, then you'll be thinking, uh, so what are you trying to tell me? Uh, I don't understand. Right, so... That's exactly how we still do ground up, but in a much faster uh, segment. Now, the question you all may be asking is how fast, right? You tell me fast, fast, like how fast? 50 to 70% faster, right? So if you take one year to build an application, maybe within six months, you can do that, right? Um, um, Adrian, I'm not sure if, if, if that's uh, true, but he, yeah, he, I mean, at least he that's... He likes uh, using me for this because <laughs> I, get, I get invited <laughs> oh. in the hot seat at our system events. All right, sure. They like to, <laughs> to, to bring Rico in and... And I tell the story of, yes, it used to take three to six months to develop an app in-house for my uh, fellow colleagues. Then we started doing it in three weeks when we used our systems. Then the change request came and we managed to do it in 30 minutes. And then we realized that we can't tell them we do it faster anymore. Every request, we tell them one week. We finish in five minutes and then we just jack attention, relax. for, for. Because once you, the, the users get spoiled. If you can make a change every five minutes, from test to production, that's what they're going to expect. And then the bad thing about it is people don't start planning anymore. You know, the reason why you plan is so that you don't waste time in development. But if your development time is so short, then why the need to plan? Just change when you need to change. So I'm sorry, I'm digressing no, no, here. No, 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 of course, of course. It's I, I a hope great all of you product. <laughs> uh, if you have IT managers here, yeah. uh, yep. please come talk to me. I tell you about the fallen season, yep. what to prepare for. But for business owners, it is definitely a great product. Absolutely, absolutely, and you definitely will get things yeah. done faster. Of course, it's not a magic bullet, la, Just to be honest, I mean, I mean, I wish every organization can can tell Adrian's story of a five minute change. But but the truth is, if you have a right process, you have a right governance, right, and the right support. Um, you should be inching closer towards making a, a more positive change and impact for your organizations, right? So, so this is like the the, the perfect scenario, lah, right? But uh, along the way, it's a journey. Yeah, it's a continuous if, journey. If you want to know who are making the five minute changes, uh, the sales reps next to you, uh, they are the ones because the CRM changes every single day. Ask them what do they ask, uh, what do they want change, and we change it for them. So I think that's that wraps it up for yeah. this session. Thank you, Leonard. Nope. Thank you. Uh, we're done.